This is dear Mama Sal and I'm out and about again and this time I'm going out for another birthday dinner. A little bit delayed but very happy to be doing it anyway. I just want to continue to talk about what's happening down in Hurricane Irma land. Um, I believe at the moment it's about to attack or is already attacking the uh, Turks and Caicos islands so sad such beautiful islands and then on its way to Florida and from what I'm seeing in the news people who are trying to evacuate uh, are caught up because there isn't enough gas available and there's also not enough water available for those who need it and I was thinking how terrifying that must be. That you've already taken your car on the road and you're trying to get out of Dodge and now you can't get enough gas and you're stuck in a car without gas, with a hurricane chasing up your rear end. Excuse that terminology, but that's what I'm thinking. Um, I would think that would be terrifying. Now, I understand that some people are filling up their cars because they tend to stay in place and they want to make sure that their car has fuel in it. It's presuming that it doesn't get swept away. I was also seeing that this thing looks like it's going to go up the absolute dead center, if you know what I mean, right up the Florida Peninsula. And that's like so devastating. That's not like a little bit of a problem. That's totally devastating. Uh, when you think of the millions of people that live there and how many of them are retired and how many of them are going to be homeless. I don't know why that's so terrifying to me, but it is. So then I started to think, well, how can I, how can I turn this around in my mind, you know, because I don't want to concentrate on the terror because I don't have to. If you understand, I choose, I can choose to change my wavelength and think of other things. You know, I'm not sitting in the path, I don't have to worry about that, although I can be concerned and I can be terrified at some level. Dwelling on it will just... Yeah, not doing me any good at all, so I'm not going to go there. So then I was thinking, you know, <laughs> you know, as only I would, um, if I were caught in this situation and I couldn't get out of the way of the hurricane, who would I want with me? You know, it's a bit like being stuck on a desert island, isn't it? Um, who would I want with me during this terrifying experience? And I couldn't help but thinking the very person I'm going to go and visit and uh, who's taking me out for dinner is Marnie, as some of you have met. And she'd definitely be very high on my list. <laughs> and the reason being, I'm just trying to think about this, the reason being she is very rarely phased by things. You know, she really has an incredible calm ability about her. But also she doesn't tell you what to do. Do you know what I mean? She's not like, well, you need to do this, 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 this. You know, she's not controlling like that at all. She's very laid back. <laughs> and very calm about, and just is in the moment. It, it's not about, I know all the answers. It's just like, okay, great. What should we do next? Um, and so she's very funny in a crisis. And I spent many years with her uh, when she was my 2IC, second in command, if you like, um, when I was running the, these leadership programs. And it was so funny because <laughs> we, used to, we used to laugh so much. And we used to laugh, 
even though the stuff that was going on was absolutely terrifying at times. And it always reminds me of the one time where <laughs> we had a, a guy on this leadership course who <laughs> we didn't know it but he was a serious gang member and somehow or other had ended up on this course that we, we weren't known for taking in gang members but you know apparently this was one of them and so he got a little bit upset about something and the next thing we know is that he's dressed up in all his gang colors and he's called the boys in <laughs> it's so funny because you know Marnie sort of does a typical Marnie thing which she, she grabs hold of two of the biggest facilitators that she's got there you know both of them over six foot something and, and, I, and she goes come with me and, and she she says but stay back come with me but stay back only Marnie could get away with it um, and so really funny because this gang member starts coming towards her you know all dressed in his covers as gang colors and Marnie says I need you to go back and change out of those colors and um, you know participate in the program and he says listen here you BIT and the rest of it you and whose army are going to stop me whistles you know <laughs> she whistles up these two big guys and she said me and my army and I've got more where they came from and that's so typically Marnie <laughs> yeah. calm fake it till you make it great stuff I've, I've loved her from the day I met her and rather like Benji and the rest of the crew that you've met, Marnie was the only female that connected with me at that level. And because she and I got on so well, you know, I literally had her as my next in command for a long time. And we just worked so well together. And we laughed. I cannot tell you how much we laughed. Not a friend of people, but later, when we realized we had got away with something and when we had the foggiest idea really what we were doing. Um, <laughs> and we have continued to love and so she's a very important part of my life I don't see much of her in fact I've seen probably more of her recently than I've seen in a while but the interesting thing about her is that I would want her with me in a crisis any crisis because she would always be the rock and yet funny and I'm thinking of a few other people in my life. You know, Yvonne, very practical, uh, very, very able to take emotion out of stuff and just deal with what is. She's really good at that. And you know, I was literally going through the list of the, the people in my life that I would, you know, want with me. And I, I was gonna check with Marnie, you know, who she'd want with her um, and why. But I really had this list, so I was wondering whether you'd like to think about that. You know, in a crisis, in a major crisis, 
Who is it that you know that you would want with you? For, and for what reason? Now you'd think I would want some sort of hunking six foot six strong man um, on, on, on the side. And I'm going, not really, no. <laughs> not necessarily. Uh, I, I really have found from my experience that having a couple of women with a good sense of humor isn't a bad thing. This is dear mama so I'll say. Bye bye for now. I've just got to add in here that see that red car in front slightly to the left. That's a Ferrari. Oh. I'm too old, right? Don't know why it still turns me on. <laughs> You'd think I'd grow up, wouldn't you? Never mind. Ah, oh, isn't that beautiful? <laughs> Happy birthday to me! <laughs> Happy birthday.